regularly scheduled select board meeting for Monday to order. Uh, with us tonight on my left is Flo Smith. To my far left is Joe Staub. To my right is Carl Parton. Is Dave going to be with us? Or? I haven't heard from him. Yeah. Okay. Expectation that he was. <coughs> okay, and um, with us also is Vince Connie, town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? There are none. Uh, public comment. Okay, uh, the fire department budget presentation. Shall I move? I believe in your pack. Oh, you see the back of my head. So the front page is your summary of the expenses and uh, uh, income. Some of the the bigger items on there, if going to page three, under benefits, uh, we, we are currently running um, a weekend duty coverage, both Saturday and Sunday. We have uh, members in the department working four hours um, doing administrative building and truck maintenance um, as well as training. What that doesn't do is necessarily cover our week at, or weekday coverage. Um, the town of Berlin is, is growing immensely and putting members there, someone to at least do administrative work and be uh, available for calls. I think the, the department, not so much the department, but the town would greatly benefit. That right there, that line item is zeroed out. That, that is to start the conversation. Um, and below that, under communications, uh, dispatch. Dispatch is um, what we pay for um, for the communication to go out on calls. Okay. That, that itself went from over 52,000 up to 54,000. That is a 4% increase. Uh, we have no control over that. Uh, below that, it says capital improvement. I will probably change this up. This is not going to be something that's going to be um, going to print for the town report because I, I do believe after the other night at our, our meeting, uh, capital improvement under the communications is, is not necessarily all that clear. If you remember a couple, I'm going to say maybe a month or so back, you had uh, Deputy Chief Joe Allsworth show up and gave a presentation. And that is uh, basically, it's the communication throughout Central Vermont, which is the Capital West. Um, they are looking to, they're making improvements right now through a grant, but they are um, looking in the next 20 years to have X amount of money set aside to do those upgrades to replace the equipment that they're currently looking to put in with the grant. So that six grand, that 6208, that's something we have no control over. That's all based off the grant list. Um, and every town is paying their share based off the grant list. That's nearly 9% of that, that line item. And probably moving back to the last page, um, you're going to see gear purchases. So that's going up four thousand dollars. I'm going to tell you a set of gear for a, a new member is roughly three thousand um, dollars, twenty-eight and change. So that gives us basically one set plus some extras. Let's just say gloves, boots, things that are actually wearing out with the members that we currently have. Our membership has increased, and the need for equipment to supply these members is, is greatly needed. Um, moving down to the equipment, one of the, the second line down from in the equipment, so equipment purchases, 
we're looking to increase that $5,500. We are looking to uh, repurpose our current pickup truck to be more of a, a quick response to some of these um, probably less um, the lesser of the motor vehicle accidents, you know, um, where you have some traffic control needed, um, some debris or fluids, that type of thing. Um, you know, possible the um, some traffic control, but no need for really the heavy equipment. Um, when you get into the heavy rescue, not everybody's going to be driving that truck. And so this is actually going to open up a new pool of drivers to um, respond to some of these, um, some of those types of calls. <coughs> Now going down to the loan line item, you can see that we, yeah, we have uh, we have received the, the new tower to us. It's a 22-year-old um, vehicle, which is replacing a 45-year-old. Okay, um, maybe not necessarily ideal in some cases. But in our case, I think this is a, a good fit right now. Um, I'll tell you better within a year of having it uh, on the road. We're looking to decrease the, the fleet. So the old tower has been the old tower has been uh, sold. That's going to be going down the road. Uh, we have one engine that is spoken for, and we have a third one which is also spoken for. So we're, we're actually getting rid of three vehicles with the purchase of this one. And I'm not necessarily uh, ready to do much with the maintenance line item until after maybe a year, year's use, and see where that's going to go. I foresee that going down. Um, I think I skipped over, and I apologize, under the utilities, and that would have been H3. So we did do an upgrade with our telephones, and so you're going to see an increase with the internet, um, and the, tele the telephone, the phone line item has gone down some. Um, I'm waiting to see where that all kind of levels itself off. I see those, the internet and the phone will be changing in the next year. Um, and the electricity, I didn't necessarily touch it, but we just replaced all the fluorescent bulbs within the building, the LED. So I, I see the electricity usage going down some. And, and I know what everybody's going to, you know, they've been telling me. I'm not ready to believe it until I see it the next year. What type of phone system do you have that costs fifty eight hundred a year? Is that just a regular landline? No, we, we have it's all it's internet based, so we use you know use going through Verizon. Some of that we also have um, call it a hotspot, which is in our rescue, so we can utilize that also out on the road. The phones are also um, our emergency management. Um, going this route does not tie emergency management to the station. They can actually take their phones with them. Um, let's just say they, um, they're going to the school, you know, evacuation, you have people going to the school. They could take their phones um, and plug it in anywhere they have internet. They could bring it here to the office. They could actually be working, uh, doing their duties at their home if they had internet there as well. For that, Joe, they need internet or just wireless? They can do it wireless. In fact, probably half our phones right now are wireless at the station. Um, so are they voice over internet or are they cell phones? I they're know. voice over it.
So the capital replacement line item uh, was increased from 30,000 to 40,000. I, I can tell you that that's not, a, not enough for replacing new trucks. Um, that's hardly enough to you know, keep used trucks in service. You know, in 10 years, you're going to have $400,000. Brand new engine's going to be costing you anywhere between six and eight hundred thousand. So that that amount is not for necessarily replacing to new new apparatus. On your gear purchase, what's the life expectancy of, of a uniform? Uniform or the gear? The gear. Gear? Ten years of not damaged. So. And what, is, what does damage include? Um, depends on how, how long and how intense maybe if you were in a, in a building fire. If you are utilizing it during a hazmat um, spill, which I would suggest not, um, you know, they, they probably go in easy six years, six to seven. And, and some of the ones that are lightly used, they'll go 10 years. They'll go plus. We have stuff that is out, out there that's, that's greater than 10 years old. We give them to new people for um, training, and as long as they're not interior, you know, they can still utilize that equipment. But on your, your, when you were saying weekday coverage, how much, how many, uh, how many people on a, on a weekday? You said it was two on the weekend. We have two on the weekend. We have no one covering in-house during the weekday. So we're relying on people um, responding from their homes, responding from their work. Um, and that's why that, that right there is it's zeroed out. It's for the start of a uh, conversation. Yeah, but how many, how many people would you, ex would you anticipate would be there during the weekdays? Two, three, four? Two would be I. Two would be sufficient. How is that stipend paid on weekends now? Is it a, a daily stipend for being there, or is it an hourly stipend? It's uh, based off an hourly stipend. Um, you know, we started out paying it out um, quarterly and moved towards monthly. Um, we're, we're still working some of the bugs out of it. Um, there have been times that I'm not going to say it was um, hard to find coverage, but with everybody's life and holidays and birthdays or vacations or whatnot, um, just because you're assigned that weekend doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're available. So we have to find coverage. And that, that's there, it's on them to find coverage. I have four possibilities. I have an officer, um, a crew leader, and two firefighters. I don't put them all in, in, in the house at the same time, but it, it's on them if they want to, but only two of them are getting paid. The other two are building points, if you want to call it. So the stipend, uh, just above that weekend duty coverage, where it says stipend. So for every two hours of volunteering, and that could be um, working in the station, it could be trainings, it could be uh, building maintenance, truck maintenance, whatever that might be, uh, meetings. For every two hours they volunteer, they get a point. So at the end of the year, you look at everybody's points, and then a value is assigned to that point. So if you have 10 people with 100 points, it's X. If you have 30 people with you know 1,000 points, it's Y. So it's forever changing. I've seen that to have a value of somewhere around $1.19 a point. Um, so that's like about 60 cents an hour. If you were to break it down and look at it like that, um, it's not meant for anyone to um, 
have a living at. What it is is it's giving them a little something for the efforts of what they put into the jar. So the uh, $19,000 loan payment for, for used T1, um, does that come out of uh, the capital replacement budget? I mean, we have money every year, 40000 or 30000 every year going into that capital, capital fund. Yeah. So that was purchased um, after the budget was approved. So that the monthly monthly payments are just currently coming out of our capital replacement. This budget would then put that nineteen thousand dollars be part of that budget, and so then what the capital replacement is then just that we're is being untouched after that for that loan. Insurance went down. We we're expecting it to be less by twenty six hundred. Well, yeah. So we have had that on the higher side, and we're just we're bringing it down. Then just below that, retirement has dropped by 3000 And again, if you look at what we spent in 2022, uh, you have a number of members who are receiving their retirement. And you have a number of members coming in. And the ones coming in are paying into it, but not necessarily reaping the rewards for Roughly, let's say two years before they, um, yeah. So, yeah, we we have cut that down. I see that that's one of those ones. Depending on the year mm -hmm. and how many members you have, you're going to see a fluctuation there. One of the things we haven't talked about is the accounting, and I wanted to ask about that because the FY22 actuals was thirteen three ninety four. And the FY23 and 24 budget was 18,000. And I know we've had discussions about how the town could assist, and I'm wondering how that could offset your expenditure increase if there was something that could be done there as a cost cutting measure if the town could assist with staff here. Um, we, we've talked about it. Um, now, at least this is the second board, I think, if not the third board, I think I've talked about it. Um, it was discussed that before we had uh, assistant treasurer, it wouldn't really be doable. Um, and since we've got the assistant treasurer, uh, I brought it up once, you know, once again. Um, it hasn't been shot down, but it has not necessarily been pursued. Um, and I think it's. You know, maybe more on the lines of the town and not at this point the fire department. Something to consider for Something certain, to consider. you know, based on workload and staffing, et cetera. Yeah. That would be more in line with discussing with Vince and Diane and mm -hmm. the staff for sure. But that might be helpful. Do we have the Nimrick program for a fire for a fire service? Mm -hmm. But it is available. I don't know. I can I'll have to call and ask. I have not done that. In terms of the overall expenditure increase of the 13.37 for FY24, where do you think you could shave if you needed to shave to get that down less than, um, not quite so 13.37, um, if you had to shave somewhere? 
where would you lean toward? Uh, this is kind of tough because of those increases that we're talking about that we don't have control over. You know, you did. We didn't necessarily talk about the fuel line item or the heating. I was actually going to ask about that. You know, yeah. those went up as well. In fact, I think we're, you know, we're going to go well beyond what we we budgeted for um, for 2000 for the 2023. Um, you know, it's hard to forecast what the cost of fuel is going to be for 2024. Right. I like seeing that it's starting to come down, but there's no way to gauge if it's going to continue that way for sure. You know, um, I couldn't honestly say that I could cut much of anything there. The three vehicles that you said that you could get rid of, would you sell them? They are being sold. They are being sold. One, one, is, one is sold. We are bartering with another. Okay. okay. Um, and the third one has not yet gone down to the auction block, let's say. Uh, I'm waiting another, let's just say, give it a, another couple of months to make sure there isn't any more gremlins in, in the other truck that we're going to rely on, um, and that will put out for And then after that, we won't have anything older than a 2001. Yeah. Any other questions for Joe? Just looking at it, noted a couple of places. <clears throat> we covered them all. The training, um, that's about double. Is that because of bringing on additional You're people? You're bringing on additional people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have um, quite a large now fast quad, which is it supplements um, Berrytown's EMS. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of times that you have Berrytown EMS. You know, they do have uh, a contract with the town to provide a service. Nothing saying that they will be housed here in town. So that responding ambulance may be coming from East Berry. Okay, so we have. Um, I'm going to say, and I know the number's going to be wrong, somewhere around seven to eight um, that are currently running um, the med calls. And we have just brought on another three EMTs. Thank you. Any more questions? Any for me? No, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Vast corridor agreement approval. Yeah. Again, it's uh, almost identical to last year's uh, corridor agreement. The simple changes that were made uh, where we added the uh, Northfield Club uh, to sign off on it as well, since they come in from the other side, from the Northfield side, and do the grooming over to Darling Hill. Uh, so you'll see Northfield and the Berry Club on there now for signature. And we changed some of the language in there as well. Uh, to show that it's the agreement is really with the snow clubs and not vast overall. We changed the vast to the, the Barry Thunder Chickens and the, the Northfield Club language. And that's pretty much the, uh, the only changes that were made from last year's agreement. And we do have um, Phil from the Conservation Commission who has been part of the development obviously of this and the, and the agreement if there's any specific questions you, you might have for him on that, but again, there's nothing really different than from last year. Any concerns, Phil? No, I think it went very well last year. Uh, pretty good line of communication with Steve Corral over in Northfield and then with Dave Rulo. They've been very responsive. Uh, I noticed we had a, uh, a little logging uh, demonstration for tech students up on Darling Hill uh, a couple weeks back and some of the ash logs were left in the trail and before I could say boo uh, the vast members had removed the logs to the side of the trail 
which is really helpful, even though they're not grooming at this point because there's nothing on the mountain at all to groom. But uh, I think it's going very well. Uh, I must say that the trail is being used quite readily, even without the snow. I was up there two days ago and there were seven cars parked and everyone, you know, hiking up uh, with their dogs or whatever. So. The only thing we have to work out with them is figuring out the gate and how we're going to work with that in the springtime. But for now, I think things are going very well. Is the trails muddy up there? Not as bad as you'd, you'd think. Uh, I was surprised. I think we've had a fair amount of wind to help dry things out up there. And uh, no, I, I didn't even wear cleats the other day on my boots. I just walked in my hiking boots with some poles. It was fine. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this? No, again, that's just another document that we'll need signed by the board, and then we'll get it out to the clubs to get them to, to okay. sign off on it as well. Have a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the vast corridor management agreement between the town of Berlin with Thunder Chickens Incorporated and Northfield Snowmobilers. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much, you, Bill. Bill. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Diane, under $5 tax forgiveness? Yes. I haven't done it for over six months now, and I've got 25 that total $16.45, and a lot of them are like a penny. So somebody just, you know, just writes to check the wrong amount, some of them from transpositions, but like you say, it's 16, 16.45 to 25, I'm just look through it. We'd like to get permission to get paid for It is bright. Isn't that bright? It is bright. Like Diane said, there's many that are under a dollar. Just uh, a lot of them are just four twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 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 a motion to approve the under five dollar tax forgiveness a total of sixteen dollars and forty five cents for all of them i'll second any further discussion then perusing <laughs> all those in favor aye, aye. Motion carries. Um, I'd like to just jump in since uh, uh, Rachel is coming. She said she'd be a few minutes late. Oh, I was just going to skip on to yeah. the RFP. Yeah, well, she's got that as well. Oh, she does. Yeah, so we'll skip her two items and if we can and then come back to them when she arrives. Okay, so. Dodge, Dodge Fireman's would be the. Yeah. Um, well, we're pretty early on that. Yeah, well, I guess not. Um, okay, Dodge Farm Road discussion or decision. So, in, in your package, you'll see a summary of events that I that I put together from since I came on board uh, with the discussions and the and the motions that were made and what was approved and what wasn't and the discussions that occurred. The minutes the minutes are in the package. Uh, behind that, if you want to read exactly how it came through in the minutes as well. Um, so that kind of brings us to where we are today. Uh, there's a letter in there that we received from them as well, requesting some some action and decisions to move it forward since the last visit, um, and their position on that basically as well. And then follow following that is a kind of a summary of uh, my thoughts. The promote conversation tonight on options on how we could possibly move it forward. Um, 
with them as well. So. So I take it that there's been no uh, changes in the road itself between our visit and now. That's correct. Uh, the other thing that's worth pointing out um, through the discussions and looking through the history, when this, because I think, I think there's still some confusion around it as well. The original agreement was to take over the Dodge Farm Road, which ended at the cul-de-sac, which is no longer there. From there up, that's Waterworks Way. Um, and you'll see that in my summary, noted in my summary that should the board elect to move forward with this, that's one of the conditions. It ends where the cul-de-sac was because that's Waterworks Way and shouldn't be a part of the takeover. Uh, we should maintain the current agreement that we have for the right of way through there, um, but not part of this acceptance of that road. Because that's a whole additional section that was never really put on the table, right? It's a, it's a different road not a from the cul-de-sac. Yeah, it's not obligatory. So the, the cul-de-sac is? That is the, that was where Dodge Farm Road ended and Waterworks Way came off the back side of that cul-de-sac. Started there and goes up through. But the cul-de-sac hasn't moved. It's still where it was originally. Well, the, the cul-de-sac no longer exists. Well, they took the center out of they it. They took the center out of it, and now the road is just one big open big area. wide mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. of road. So that's, that's, again, that's something that's, and then I thought uh, Mr. Sear was going to be with us tonight. He, he's not here uh, to speak for them, so. You know, that's one of the first paragraphs there that I mentioned that as part of what needs to be agreed with them. It ends there and doesn't continue up past those other two driveways, which we were looking at on the walkthrough. That's all Waterworks Way. We could wait to discuss it because it was on the agenda for 725, just in case they're waiting to come on closer to. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk. talk you through it and then we can come back to that it if they join good. as well. So. Yes, that sounds wonderful. Um, good use of the time. So the, uh, you know, some of the other things that I, you know, looking at it, you know, there was, again, if you look through the minutes, there was the talk about paving it. Um, and then it was agreed, a motion was made and passed to just pave uh, up to 50 feet. I think they actually went 70 feet from the existing uh, road in. Um, that, so that, you know, the, the previous board made that motion and accepted that, that portion of it without paving the whole thing. Um, then there were some other, other things that came up. Um, you know, there was a motion made uh, back in January, as long as it was brought to town standards and such. Um, the letter that we received from Mr. Sear, they, they're a little bit confused. I think the letter should be, the letter's in the package as well. Um, they submitted the engineering report that shows, you know, where they tested it and, and it's, it meets the requirements of the town standard that it's documented in our, in our process. The, the, um, there are still a couple of issues uh, there uh, that, that Tim has still brought up and, and one of them is the crown in the road is lacking on that lower portion of the road um, from where the pavement stops up to where the cul-de-sac was, right? Uh, there is the, the berm on the side of the road uh, that's still keeping water from flowing off the road uh, that's there. And I think there's one, one culvert that uh, is plugged basically or partially buried on, or is buried on one end. Um, that's there. Um, Again, they're, they're not here to speak to that, so I don't know uh, what their thoughts are on that. Uh, but my proposal at this point would be, you know, this is, it's been going on for a while. Um, we still have the procedure to accept the roads. It gives us 12 months before we officially accept it to take it over and annotate any major issues that we may have with that 
that they're still responsible for um, before we officially take the road over as well. You know, uh, my thoughts are there's there's question um, about the uh, the amount of material on the top of the road as well. So I'm saying, let's if we if we accept the road in this condition, we've got 12 months, and if we started say March 1st, for example, we'll get this year's mud season in, and that um, we'll have a chance to grade the road and see if we can put a crown in it or if materials needed. Um, this is again where we need to negotiate with them to get them to accept the terms, and then we can talk about if if the town puts the material on the road, do they pay for it at town cost? Do we do we split it with them? Whatever the board decides at that point, um, we can do that. Um, we take the berm off when we're grading. That's you know that can be done. Um, those are those are the three major things. Then there's the, the culverts left. We can talk about the culvert with them as well. Um, to see how they want to handle that. Those were the three, four big things if you, if you look at ending at the cul-de-sac, where the cul-de-sac was, that needs to be agreed to. Okay. That um, kinda, that's kind of a summary. I'm trying to think, the last road the town took over was up on Vine Street, and that road was low compared to the, for the, uh, compared to the ditches. And that community just, they, had the material brought in and paid for it themselves. We I'm a little that. hesitant yeah. about yeah. having material. We also, we also paid that. No. No, my street, no, that stayed ground. That's Berlin Heights is what he's talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah. And they paid for the for the additional yeah. material and yeah. I just don't want to take and start a precedent here. Yep, no, it, exactly. It's, that's where we need to propose to them this is this is where we're at at some point and and kind of move it forward okay thank you Vince yeah. Rachel is with us come on up Rachel well, Town meeting morning moving discussion approval and uh, RFP for record digitization Copies for y'all of the warning. I've scrapped it. You can let me know how you feel about this. Um, so, the last time we met, we did talk about whether the town had approved to move town meeting um, to the Saturday before, and I did find in previous, note, previous notes before COVID um, that it was discussed and agreed upon that town meeting would be Saturdays going forward. Um, so that is obviously how it will have to be this year. Um, the question would be, are you all content with that? Or does anybody want to move it back again, seeing that it didn't appear to make much of a difference? Um, I'm fine with it being Saturday myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Well, I mean, the idea was to change it to Saturday in hopes of a larger audience. But I don't, Maybe I would, it'll catch on. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was interrupted. I would I would think probably just keep it as it is for this year and probably and see if um, we can discuss it after the town meeting when the new board has been seated. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume that you'll all want to take time to read through the warning as it is. I will note that there's a few changes highlighted in yellow that still um, we're waiting to finalize. Um, obviously, the total number of appropriations are still coming in, um, so that could change. Um, and the budget. The budget and the, the fire department's budget as well. Yeah. Um, we, we have that number now for the fire department. We got that coming. Perfect. So, they use the total expenses. Oh, I will tell you the numbers highlighted here in yellow were previous year's yeah. numbers, mm -hmm. just because I had yeah. to have a placeable there. Understood. <laughs> um, in the last page, you'll see the list of appropriations that have come in thus far. Hopefully you have it. Actually, maybe I didn't give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's itemized on the very, very back of the packet as well, if you want to see it as is. Um, 
so far nothing is an increase in requests. It's all level funding from before. Are there any new ones this year, Rachel? Not yet. No? Okay. Well, any new ones will have to have a petition. petition. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They still have a little time left to do that. Uh, Rachel, when does the when does when does this have to go out to print? Uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. um, the printer is aware of the quick turnaround, um, so appropriations have requests have to be in by the nineteenth. So then, hopefully, during that following week, we could get it out to print. he's going to be with us? No, I have not. And I will. I actually had a little concern about what happens if he decides he doesn't want to do it. What happens? Well, he's elected for this year Yeah. up till the town meeting. And okay. then, then once the first article should be election of a moderator mm -hmm. and uh, you do that vote and then you move on. However, if Paul doesn't want to take and do it next year, hopefully he'll let you know and we can put it out there. I can't believe he wouldn't. But. He's always done such a fabulous job and he always offers up for people to volunteer and that he's willing to train and assist. And that's I think it's very kind. I make a motion to approve the warning and notice as presented to us this evening um, via Rachel, you know, acknowledging that there will be additions as they come forward and that the deadline is January 19th for additional appropriations. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And the RFP for the records. Excellent, yes. So I did not print to you all a bunch of copies because it's a very lengthy <laughs> document. So if you'd like to have time to read it over, um, I certainly can get you copies to do that. Um, so Vince kindly drafted up this um, based on our attorney's advice. Um, and we've got an issue date, hopefully February 1st. Um, giving time for some site visits and any questions. Um, I'd like to have all questions answered and everything clarified by the end of February um, and then potentially award a contract March 1st um, with the work beginning any time between March and August is my hope. Um, so in this RFP as we discussed was the requirement that the documents stay on the premises because we do know we at least have somebody able to scan the documents from the parking lot. So um, that is included in here as well. And how many years are you going back? Um, we're going to go back 40 years for the initial um, 
which is what um, the law firms have to look back for. So, um, and then after that, we'll do the rest ourselves as yeah. time allows. Yeah. You said 40 years. 40. 40, okay. 40 That's what I thought I heard. <laughs> okay, what was that? They wouldn't be happy with four. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And have you issued, have you put out the RFP yet? or? I have sent the RFP to um, the three companies that we had previously talked about um, digitization with. So, yeah. and Profile and Records Force. I have not sent it to anyone else or advertise it elsewhere. <laughs> How many companies do this work? So as far as providing a system for us to use, um, we've got one more modern company. Um, there are a couple, in my opinion, outdated companies that we could also put this out to. My guess is they won't be able to come and scan documents on site. And the program that they would have available is will be dated. Um, I think it's slim pickings for options. But. Mm -hmm. Exciting for us too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to think. You you asked for RFPs from the three companies that originally. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much then. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, let's see here. Uh, Beaver Baffle, scoop oil. Uh, he hasn't joined us, so I don't. Uh, I don't see him online. I'll. Uh, I'll contact him after and reschedule him. I know there's a lot of questions around the maintenance and upkeep and and such that uh, we wanted to discuss with him. So before approving it. Well, we could skip ahead and come back to it because it was on for seven. It was almost seven now. Close. Yeah. Um, Okay, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-14 for payroll from December 18th to December 31st of this year, paid on January 4th, 2023, in the amount of $60,828.07. <coughs> also payable warrant 23-G12 with the checks 22567 to 22616 for payables in the amount of $121,000. $884.54 and December reconciled bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking accounts. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, seen the uh, certificate of highway mileage? Pass that around. And there's no changes in it. Uh, so it's the same as same a mileage as last year. There's been no changes in it. So it's just that document has to be filed with the state every year. After everyone's had a chance to look at it, I'll make the motion to approve the certificate of Highway mileage as presented to us this evening. Please, uh, please all sign that before you leave. Second. If it's approved. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Um, Approval of December 19th, 2022 minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented with some changes to names and some data within 
and I made notations for bits, and he's going to take care of that. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. I'm going to, Aye. Before, I'm going to abstain because I have my Christmas flu that day. So. Glad you're feeling that. Yeah. Peppermint cure it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, Uh, round table flow? Nothing, thank you. Go. Um, so the fire department still has a seat available on the board of directors and it is open for um, town residents. This is a town resident who is not uh, currently a corporate member. And it gives them a voice at the table and that individual would be appointed by the select board. So anyone who is interested in um, sitting on the board of directors for the fire department. You could reach out to Vince Ponte or any one of the select board members and throw your name into the ring. Much appreciated. That's it. Carol? I've had a request from a uh, non-citizen traveler about Granger Road and maybe considering mining that near the uh, the construction plant there, the concrete plant and the and the clinic and the tire store. There's uh it's it's about four lanes wide uh, when you go uh, there and, and the S curves they go right in there's an S curve sure. and there's no line so you're not really sure which lane you're in was his assertion and it he, he mm. felt it was dangerous there. Even uh, even a you know a white line to know where the parking lot started for the uh, for the mill and uh, something we could discuss in the future. Thank you, Diane. Is there there is a line item for for uh, pavement marking in the yes budget? It's all one. Yeah, it's all one paving marking. Paving, and ceiling, and marking. And yeah, marking. ceiling, ceiling, and lining. Now, the, the line marking part of that, is that's not separate from the paving? In other words, you repave something, then you, you stripe it, and then it's... It's all part of the same, yeah. It's all going to go in that same account. Because you still have all the other tar roads in town that uh, Granger, Fisher, I mean, take your pick. A lot of them are marked by the state. Mm -hmm. uh, Painter and Pike, Fisher Road, uh, Crosstown, Scott Hill, and the Airport Road are all marked through the state. They do a contract with. I think they pretty much stick with um, L and D. L and D. Who did it this year? I know. Well, how many roads that are blacktop that aren't the under the state marking program? Foxbrook Junction Road. Uh, Hell no. Yeah, but that's. Those are the two that have center lines on them. The rest of them, like um, Partridge Farm, Point Ridge, Crowell Hill, um, the small ones don't have no markings on them. Hmm. It's just, they're just more or less longer aprons for dirt roads. So we have a number of paved roads with no center line that's on a schedule of being blocked. Okay. The other question is, Tim, should we? 
I don't know the exact law or rule of thumb in that aspect. I know like industrial lane has no markings on it and that's, that hasn't been paved in quite some time. Um, usually it's, um, and I could be talking out of context, but I believe it's the width of the road in most times of what requires them to be marked. Um, but I'm not sure on that. But I know, like where he's talking up my pipe, I wouldn't imagine that line to last very long. The no. trucks will have that line scuffed off in no time. Yeah. The only, the only way to, to get a line to last like that, they have to go in and mill it out, so it's below the travel portion of the road, and then paint them in. Type deal. Otherwise, they'll just scuff them off. Is all the tractor and trailer trucks just they go they cut those S corners off above Carroll to make the hill straight for them yeah. to go up through. Um, In your opinion, would that be something the state would become involved with based on the way no, it would need to would be, be done to be held? They would be probably time. on us to hire LD or somebody to, to mark the center of that road if need be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember. I don't believe it was marked prior to being paved. I'm trying to remember, because half of it was done before I got here, the other half was done after. And I don't remember it being, having a center line on it. Because once you get past pipe, it's only, you know, I mean, four foot wide. And most of it's, well, Bowl Carroll's 24 foot wide, and that after industrial lane, it's only 24 foot wide. It's a little bit. It's wider down through because Carroll has an apron that they drive their trucks up the side of the road. Uh, Pike has their apron because it's where they they have their yard paved where they stock out the material. And most of the time the trucks are pulling over out of the way of traffic when they're coming up to the top of the hill to pull in so there's not, but they're out of the way of I wonder if Carol and Pike would get involved as far as a safety issue and keeping just the average traveler uh, out of their dooryard, uh, you know, driving in their, in their parking lot rather than the actual road if they'd be interested in helping at least put the white line uh, delineating their, their property, really. We can just do it, but it's going to get, you know I mean, like I said, the trucks will scuff all the white lines off in no time. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if we should have anything for a separate paving, a uh, marking budget. I don't know, a lot of them for that. I believe it's always been just all in the same, really crack seal and asphalt and line marking. It's all been one budget. So we don't know that if there's a requirement or not, right? Not that I okay. personally know of. Okay. But that doesn't mean that there's not one. Yeah. So Vince, I'm making notes. <laughs> <laughs> we can look into it, and we can also look into, you know, getting a price on having them mill the lines out. I don't think that's going to make a, a large difference. I don't either. And, and I think most of the trucks some that are the, going the, in there are 100,000 pounds. So. Some of those it, paved roads that, that don't have a lot of truck traffic, you know, you put lights on them, they might go a couple of years, maybe. Um, you know, not up there on Granger Road with the trucks, they would be gone. But I think if we didn't, if we we're required to have them and we're not doing it, something happens and it's brought up, if the lines were worn off, we made the attempt and we put the line on it. So let's let's think about this. We'll we'll take a look at the specs and see what they are. Yeah. We'll also this spring we'll we'll request a price. We'll talk to Pike and uh, Carol as well to see if they're inter interested to participate with us in that to do some test trips in front of Carol's and Pike's on the side of the road. As he says before. The white lines. Yeah. The white lines on the side maybe or a solid yellow center line if it's possible maybe in that area. Uh, just to give it a little bit of definition, and then we'll see how long it lasts, and we can make a decision. 
You know, if it lasts through the summer, and we probably don't want to be doing that every year. If it lasts a couple of years, or where's good the first year, then maybe next year we look at it again to do the rest of the road. I don't well, know. I mean, it's just a thought. It's not going to take L and D very long to mobilize to do that. So. <laughs> exactly. I mean, of course, the, the whole trick is how much they charge per mile or how they whatever right. Right. distance they use. Yep. But. Okay. Anything else, Carl? Nope. Seven o'clock, and the Beaver Baffle guy isn't here. No. I'll I'll reach out to him, and uh, you know, it's not like we're going to be installing it in a month or so anyway. So we've got time. I, I was wondering if perhaps we could uh, ask him if we chose a different, less expensive route uh, that still had uh, animal protection and in its in its heart of. Uh, um, catch and relocate if, if they'd be willing to contribute to that scenario. Yeah, but I'd, I'd be afraid the, the next cheapest way is a dollar a piece. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't contribute to 50 cents to that, so yeah. maybe, they'd, maybe they'd help the trap and relocate. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do beavers travel back? I think they have a tendency to. They're, they usually only leave when there's lack of pressure food. or lack of food. But I'm just trying to think how far away you'd have to locate the. The trouble is, is you're just making you're it somebody giving somebody else's. else your problem. Yeah. And then, so. I'm not sold on the beaver baffles. Um, yeah, they're a quick, easy fix, but they're expensive and they only last for a certain bit of time. I have not seen one, and we've had the discussion in the last week between all of us that we really haven't seen any of them, no matter how fancy or how great they are, make the longevity of three years before you're over there with a piece of machinery ripping them out and taking them to the dump because they've plugged them, broken them, and I brought the fact up to him there's two sides to that culvert. I've seen it before. They will find a way to go from the other way. They will just go across the road and come in from the bottom and start plugging the bottom. They, their whole objective is, is just stop water flow. And when it's still flowing from one direction to the other, they'll come from downstream to where they want to start. So to plug one side, you've got to almost do the exact same to the other yeah. side because they'll just go around and come in from the bottom of the pipe. Okay, so before we adjourn, um, what's the board's pleasure on um, on the um, Dodge Prime Road? I'm assuming that they haven't come into the. They, no, they have. They haven't joined. So I can, I can reschedule them as well. And they haven't done any upgrades that we discussed. Not since the last walkthrough. I think it would be best when? to reschedule them, and then we could go over their side of it and what we know is historical and our recommendation and what we've discussed tonight but to give them an opportunity to express their views as well, and then we could make our final decision. Motion to table? Mm -hmm. I make the motion to table the discussion regarding the Dodge Farm Road. Second. To win. To the next meeting. Next regularly scheduled meeting of the select board. First meeting in February. Still move the second there, Joe? I'm good with that. Yep. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Do we want to schedule additional budget meetings? I Do think Vince already set one out, didn't you? There's one for Monday. Do we need any additional other than Monday in your uh, We'll know Monday. Week? I okay. scheduled it for two hours, and All right. hopefully Great. we can hammer it out then. If not, then we'll decide we'll on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. 
<laughs> if we need to. Because Monday's going to be a tough one for me. Okay. We'll discuss that. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Yeah. But just, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to throw out in your package, there's a couple of things for information for you uh, regarding the CLA. Um, its value. And there's also the, uh, uh, in the back of the CLA, there's all the towns and their results as well, so you have something to compare to. There's also a letter from uh, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission that wants to know if the board is interested in, uh, how did they word that? Transit-oriented development. Uh, they, they have, there's some grant money available as well. Uh, do we want to participate with uh, uh, the Northwest Vermont? It's, uh, again, it's all well described in your letter, in your package. Um, you can just take a look at it and let me know. I have to respond to them uh, with a letter of interest if the board is interested by uh, January 20th. In the announcements? That was it for me. Uncharacteristic will be short. For me or in general for the meeting? <laughs> I can pretty much promise you the next one on Monday won't be. Yeah. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly scheduled select board meeting. Here, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.